Hello and welcome to the latest BCIS Outlook for Construction webinar uh, with me, David Crossway. Uh, before we start, uh, some, some small housekeeping points that I'm hoping most of you uh, will be uh, familiar with now if you're regular viewers. Um, but please feel free to, to ask any questions uh, you have through throughout the webinar using the, the chat box and I'll get through as many of those as I can. Um, at the end of the session. And for those questions that we don't get around to addressing, um, we will obviously continue the discussion using the BCIS LinkedIn group as usual. Um, and as usual, the session will be recorded and made available on BCIS online. So in case you encounter any technology problems, uh, don't worry. You'll still get the chance to watch and ask questions after the event. Um, also, when leaving the session today, you'll be prompted to give us some feedback um, and the feedback obviously will help us make sure that we're delivering what you want um, going forward. So, so we'd be grateful if you could take the time to answer um, and also let us know in the survey if there are any topics uh, in particular you'd like us to focus on for, for future events and we'll try and get to those. So what are we going to look at today? Um, as usual, we'll be looking at the prospects for the construction sector um, over the next quarter um, and also a little bit further further out as well. Um, and we're looking to address the question, recession or recovery? Um, and there are various reports um, and data suggest that recession is going to be fairly short lived. Um, I think a lot of that depends on what measure you use um, to 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 uh, to look at a recession. Um, the implications, I think, are fairly um, drastic for our for our economy. Um, we, we have been bumping along the bottom for the last um, few years, um, and I think um, obviously GDP is a standard measure for uh, for looking at the size of an economy and. Uh, whether GDP grows or declines um, is whether or not we're in recession or a growth period. Um, but I think it's interesting that our um, GDP has risen slightly um, in the last month uh, since since Christmas uh, during January. Um, but if you if you look at another measure, um, which is GDP per capita, so GDP per head, I think that's much more insightful. Um, and that actually is still depressed. Um, so economists' arguments at the moment are that our GDP is growing as, as a result of population growth rather than anything that our economy is doing. Um, but anyway, that's a, another story about a topic for another webinar. Um, going back to our, our question, recession or recovery. Um, so to address that, we'll, we'll examine the current outlook for construction as, as usual. Um, and we'll be looking at forecasts of future demand levels, both at output and, and orders level. Um, and then we'll look at any cost and price movement in construction using BCIS data. Um, and then we'll draw some conclusions. And uh, as I said earlier, we'll take any questions at the end that we've got time to cover. So if we set the scene a little bit, um, despite my, <laughs> my rambling about um, wider economy growth. Um, construction is probably in, in recession at the moment, um, although the latest monthly data su does suggest a slight uptick in output. Um, I think there, you know, there's, it's broadly positive news, um, particularly um, regarding new work output on a, on a monthly basis, although the quarterly uh, and year-on-year -year output numbers still look pretty concerning to me. Um, and if we consider that February, certainly in the in the south of the country, was one of the wettest months on record, um, we're expecting a slight downturn in the next set of numbers for construction output. Um, and also um, the recent budget and, and the publication of the pipeline um, didn't really do much to, uh, to allay industry fears that 2024 was likely to be a, a fairly challenging one for the sector. So let's see what the current data is telling us. So we're going to take a quick canter through um, 
the current demand position um, for construction, and we'll be uh, using a combination of uh, PCIS and, uh, and ONS data to do that. So if we look at uh, construction output data, um, and having said in the uh, preamble, <laughs> the output was growing. That's a, that was on a on a monthly basis. Um, but if we if we look at the most recent quarterly data, which I, I think is much more robust, robust and um, slightly less subject to, to revision, um, and it's what economists normally use for for, for looking at. Um, sector size uh, and, and growth. Um, the most recent quarterly data indicates a fall in total output. And this is essentially because we've got recessionary pressures feeding through from the wider economy into construction. Um, the cost of borrowing is impacting the new work sector and financing costs uh, are still you know, high and remaining a major barrier to investment. Um, and with growth in the UK economy expected to be subdued um, for, for the next two years. PCIS is forecasting construction output to fall this year, uh, mainly because of de decreases in, in, in housing work. But to recover slowly from, from 2025, um, and then after, after that we expect above trend growth, actually from, from 2026 onwards. Um, total, total output does remain um, above pre-crisis levels. Um, but, but certainly growth is turning down. Um, and if we look in the two subsectors that make up total output, um, new work uh, growth has declined significantly actually over, over, over last year. Um, but on the more positive note, you can see that R&M repair and maintenance output has continued to grow strongly throughout, throughout the period. Um, actually, just post pandemic uh, growth has, has been fairly exponential. So if we now look at uh, new work um, construction output, um, we can break that down by by, uh, by sector. Um, and including this, we have a little forecast of, of what we're expecting. Um, so, so new work output growth uh, is expected to, to fall this year. Um, by about three uh, percent over the over the calendar year, uh, and that's primary, primarily due to the continuing decline in output in the housing sector, um, which is the, the largest largest sector in volume terms. Um, I mean, clearly, high interest rates um, and a, a stagnant economy have, have adversely affected private investment, um, and so we we also expect that private industrial work, private commercial, and private housing output to, to, to bear the brunt of, of any declines this year. Um, if we now look at infrastructure output, which is the red line on the chart, um, that actually remains at historically high levels, uh, although we are predicting some, some slowdown in growth during, during the forecast period over the next five years. Um, there is a defined pipeline of work, which which we are hoping um, we'll see output levels maintained, um, and that's obviously assuming that, that, that the pipeline is realised. Uh, we we remain uh, optimistic that uh, the government, and that's either the incumbent government or or, or a new one, um, will continue to see infrastructure investment as a key lever to economic growth. Um, and we expect um, levels of investment in, in infrastructure to, to be maintained. Um, although, I mean, I think a caveat to that is that uh, we've, we've obviously got the upcoming election, um, and that's likely to complicate um, any, any position, I think, re regarding infrastructure. Um, so we're expecting um, a subdued recovery in output, um, new work output from 2025, uh, and that looks highly likely given, given the current uh, macro conditions. Um, and we expect that growth to be driven by um, uh, growth in uh, the two largest subsectors, essentially private housing and infrastructure. Um, so growth will return to those two, two subsectors. Um, but, but again, uh, the other caveat to that is that a lot of the, a lot of our 
um, predictions will, will uh, be dependent on the outcome of the election late, later this year. Um, overall, um, total new work output, we're expecting to grow by about 15% uh, over the forecast period through 2029, so we're averaging around sort of 3% per annum. So if we now take a, a quick look at uh, repair and maintenance construction output, um, and this um, part of, of construction output has, has really been the key driver over over, over the last few years uh, since before the pandemic. Um, and it's looking pretty pretty good, um, following sustained growth uh, over, the, over the last few years. We are expecting the RNM uh, sector to, to plateau slightly this year. Um, all sectors are sort of uh, predict to stagnate uh, a little bit over the next 12 months. And, and this is largely due to, to continued affordability issues. Um, but again, we're expecting some, some muted recovery in 2025, um, largely driven by increases in, in, in housing um, and, and non-housing repair and maintenance work. Uh, we're introducing a sort of new new slide this time uh, around. Um, I thought it would be interesting to look at um, future demand as as predicted by um, the ONS this construction new orders series. Um, and this chart essentially shows uh, the new order series broken down by by major sector. Um, and and. It seems seems pretty obvious, but it uh, looks like all new orders are trending down, um, which is sort of indicative that the, the future pipeline of work may, may be shrinking. Um, I mean, I think this chart, of particular interest in this chart really is, is the, the dramatic fall in private commercial orders since the financial crisis in 2007. So that's the uh, the, the blue line at the far left uh, um of the chart, and you can see that it's uh, it's fallen significantly um, over the period. Um, and and private commercial was 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 once, um, and this is sort of pre financial crisis in two thousand and seven. It was the largest sector by volume, um, but uh, but but now, as you can see, it's uh, um, not only it, uh, it was the largest sector in output terms, although it's uh, it was also the largest sector by by orders. Um, in terms of orders, um, but it's now significantly smaller, um, and I think that sort of relates to um, the, the the need for retail space and office requirements, which have, have really sort of changed fundamentally um, over over the, the last decade. So, if we have a quick look now at um, <clears throat> our summary of, of of growth predictions by by sector. Um, Given that we've just looked at the sort of wider construction sector output and orders um, view, um, it, it's it's clear I think that uh, the unfavourable investment climate, um, combined with the uncertainty that an, an election year brings, is is continuing to have a negative impact on on new work output, um, new housing, um, commercial, and industrial. Are, are still the main drags on activity, while repair and maintenance output in housing and public non-housing are, are likely, or we're forecasting, to, to, to pick up over the next 12 months. Um, but if you look at uh, growth in the other subsectors, it's, it's expected to be largely flat through through the upcoming year. Um, so I think I think essentially. Um, Probably a repeat of what we've been going through for the last year or so. We've got new work as the, as the drag on activity, um, with, with, with some repair and maintenance growth, um, main, maintaining um, total output levels. So if we now uh, move on to to look at uh, costs and prices, see what the, the inflationary picture looks like. Um, and, and, and for the next few slides, we'll be using uh, BCIS data to give us a, a view of what those inflationary drivers for construction might be. So on this first slide, we'll, we'll, have, we'll take a look at uh, growth in 
in the BCIS General Building Cost Index and the uh, All In Tender Price Index. Um, as you can see, um, annual growth in tender prices, as measured by the BCIS All In TPI, continue to ease. Um, so we've got it falling from 8.6% in the first quarter of last year um, to 2.9% in the first quarter of this year. Um, so a fairly significant fall. Um, and we expect inflation in tender prices to remain subdued through through this year um, and certainly into early, early 2025. Um, but they likely will recover um, as, as demand increases going forward from, from 2025 over the, over the forecast period. Um, so for the remainder of this year, um, we're predicting that annual growth in tender prices will, will, will likely continue to fall, um, falling to sort of 1.6% by, by the end of this year. Uh, it's not until really sort of the end of um, 2025, so the third quarter, that uh, we see tender prices start to rise faster than costs. Um, and over the next five years, we're predicting tender prices to rise by about 17% um, through to 2029. Um, building costs, as measured by the uh, BCIS General Building Cost Index, um, increased slightly um, towards the end of, of, of last year, so the fourth quarter of 23, um, only by 0.2%. Um, and this resulted in annual growth of, of, of 2.7% in the year to, to fourth quarter 23. Um, and, and similarly to, to what we report, reported last time, uh, inflation at the moment is, is continuing to be, to, to be driven by labour costs rather than material costs. Um, so labour costs we're, we're predicting to rise uh, by about 15% over the forecast period. Um, with, with, with wage awards uh, remaining the main driver. So if we now take a look at the uh, input costs, so we look at uh, look at the growth in um, BCIS materials and labour cost indices. Um, fairly obviously, I think you can see with the blue line there, the BCIS materials cost index displayed uh, displayed negative annual growth uh, for the past two quarters and uh, we're forecasting it to, to fall further um, in, in this quarter. Um, the slowdown mainly driven by uh, a fall in costs for, for oil, um, steel, aggregates and timber um, and uh, we're, we're forecasting uh, the index to, to, to grow by about 13% over the next five years so significantly um, lower growth expected uh, than we've seen in the recent past and uh, uh, sort of return to, to trend, really. Um, however, uh, there are some risks uh, to that materials cost inflation forecast um, and, and they, the risks remain on the upside um, due to the uncertainty surrounding attacks in the Red Sea uh, and the ongoing conflict in the Middle East. I think for, for the UK, certainly, I don't think those impacts have been um, particularly high um, at, at the moment, um, but there's always that potential. Um, there are sort of M&E uh, components that, that come from Asia, um, and obviously they're being having to be rerouted um, by South Africa rather than going through the Suez Canal. So that is having some impact on, um, on, on costs, but it's fairly minor at the moment. I think that um, if the conflict in the Middle East continues for any length of time, um, we could start to see inflationary pressures build. Um, so in terms of, of, of labour costs, um, I think taking into consideration the agreements that, that are already in place, um, the construction output force forecast that we've looked at earlier, um, and, and the prevailing economic climate, um, we're, we're actually predicting that uh, annual growth in, in labour costs will peak this quarter um, at about 7%. Um, and, and after that, we'll, we'll slow. Um, so growth, will, we think, will be around 4.5% um, by the beginning of next year. Um, and then following that further into the forecast, we're expecting um, 
annual growth to, to return to the long-term trend of around 3% uh, for the remaining years of the forecast. Um, and over, over those five years, we're expecting um, labour costs to grow by about 18%. Um, over the forecast period, uh, which is obviously significantly lower than we've we've, we've witnessed recently. Um, so, yeah, pretty pretty benign prediction, I think, um, for, for for input costs going forward um, towards the end of the decade. And given that we uh, we focused on labour costs um, on the previous slide as, as the main driver, although that impact is is starting to lessen, um, as usual, we'll take a look at. Uh, the, the growth in, in construction earnings, and I think you can clearly see on that chart that uh, um, growth is definitely easing. Um, the average weekly earning index for construction increased by 3.7% um, the last quarter of, of, of last year, um, and that's a year-on-year -year, um, comparison, um, and, and also was down almost 6%. Um, for, uh, from the previous quarter, uh, and, and I think that highlights uh, a slowdown in wages growth, um, and also annual growth in the all, all in Hayes and BCIS site wage cost index uh, does show site rates rising slightly, slightly um, towards the end of last year. Um, so they've risen by by three percent, and that was up from two percent uh, recorded in the previous quarter. Um, and I think when looking at the, the quarterly dynamics, um, we can see that after two quarters of positive growth, um, the index actually declined um, in the fourth quarter of 23. Um, and uh, this, this was mainly driven by falls in the site wages for, for, for general building and uh, mechanical and electrical um, skill trades. Um, and just as an aside, um, the BCIS labour cost index, which we which saw on the previous slide, that increased by 6.9% during the same period, um, so up very slightly from 6.8% in, in the third quarter. Um, and, and this slight increase is attributed to um, the Joint Conciliation Committee of the Heating, Ventilating and Domestic Engineering Industry Wage Award. Um, and that, that came into effect um, from October. Um, it, it's... Important to note, I think, with with the BCIS, um, uh, the Hayes BCIS site wage cost index, is that um, they produce using market data from from Hayes recruitment, and uh, which generally represents short term labour requirements for for immediate fulfilment. And and because of this, the index tends to be a bit more volatile um, than our, both our labour cost index and the ONS AWE series, average weekly earnings series. Um, uh, and, and it's faster to react to changes um, in market conditions um, than, than other labour indices are. But I think it's, it's clear to see that uh, there, there's a declining trend um, in, in wage growth evident uh, for, for our sector. So if we now take a, take a look at the uh, BCIS market conditions index. Um, so, so I'm... Look at market, uh, see what market conditions look like going forward. Um, this slide shows our BCIS market conditions index, which is essentially the relationship between costs and prices. Um, in the first quarter of 24, um, the BCIS market conditions index is forecast to decline by uh, a very small proportion, so 0.1% on, on the previous quarter. Um, and, and that results in a fall of 0.6% um, overall when when compared with a year earlier. Um, so broadly speaking, uh, the MCI, um, wh when it's rising, um, prices are rising faster than costs. And when it's falling, costs are rising faster than prices. So despite what we've seen in the previous slides and, and you know, the current the current slowdown, um, uh, in, in, in input cost growth, we're actually still seeing costs marginally ri rise uh, faster than prices. Um, but looking ahead, uh, our expectation is that fall falling materials prices and the steadying in um, uh, site labour rates will see the market 
conditions start to uh, index start to rise towards the end of uh, of this year, um, and we then predict enterprises to rise faster than costs over the rest of the forecast period. Um, the caveat to that is that um, we need output levels to be maintained, so we need the demand to be there in the marketplace. Um, but uh, that, that's our prediction that, that, that tender prices will, will start to start to lead costs um, from from next year onwards. As as usual, um, we'll, we'll now take a look at uh, some of our feedback from um, the BCIS industry panel. Um, I mean, we largely do this because there's only so much the data can tell you. Um, I mean, I'm a great proponent of, of, of using data, but uh, there's always a lag um, in, in, in producing statistics. So, so we, we sort of use this every quarter to, to, to examine um, some of the comments from, from, from our industry panel, um, and they provide us with a sort of view, view on the ground. Um, so, a couple of things flagged this this uh, this quarter um, in terms of procurement. Uh, contractors are, uh, are now more inclined to to bid for simpler projects, um, and I think that's you know a, a risk strategy. They're they're aiming to to, to mitigate their, their cash flow exposure. Um, large and and complex projects are. Are, are being seen as, as fairly risky um, and as a result are attracting a smaller tender list um, and therefore that's feeding through into, into higher tender prices so as there's the less, uh, less competitive tension um, on large and complex projects. Um, and thirdly, uh, contractors are, are being a bit more selective on the, on the tender routes that they're willing to work. Um, Usually they want two stage or target cost contracts, um, and there is little appetite for, for single stage, uh, tenders. Um, so one of the, one of the other comments was, was, um, about negative inflation on some design and build projects, um, particularly where the integrated contractor has, has direct control over their supply chain. Um, and in terms of procurement overall, the supply chain is appearing very cautious, um, and some tier one contractors have actually switched their focus um, to, towards public sector and framework um, projects, um, and that's obviously having an influence in the market in terms of um, capacity and uh, su supply and demand. Uh, the, the other issue, I just, so we looked at procurement, the other issue highlighted by by panel members was was um, work packages, um, and I think this came up last quarter. Um, uh, mechanical and electrical um, and plant market continues uh, to see higher than average costs, um, and this is being driven by supply chain pressures and and the availability of uh, skilled labour. Um, as a result, um, M&E. Uh, pricing is carrying a premium of, of five to seven and a half percent over general building um, trade inflation. Um, and members believe that we're still seeing the continuation of a long term trend of um, m e pricing running a couple of percentage points above um, general building work overall um, and their view is that this is being driven by resource constraints. Um, clearly, um, M&E work is, is highly skilled, um, and there is a smaller pool of, of skilled operatives available. Obviously, there are some training issues in terms of it. You know, it's a, it's a long-term uh, training commitment to get to get up to uh, a particular skill level. Um, and the other issue is. Uh, regulatory changes um, in, in the marketplace, um, which is also um, having an issue, uh, having an impact on, on, on the delivery of uh, me mechanical and electrical services. Um, and this is, we flagged this um, earlier in the presentation that, that some components um, for, 
for M&E. Um, uh, the delivery of those are being affected by, by the crisis in the Red Sea. Um, freight prices um, from, from China um, and Asia in general, I think, actually, to no- Northern Europe have, have more than tripled um, over the last few months. Um, and that's clearly having an, uh, an impact on, on, on prices, um, particularly of imported products such as electrics, white goods, lighting, kitchen and bathroom products, fixtures and fittings, um, ironmongery and plywood. So a whole so a raft of um, construction products there being being impacted by what's happening in, in the Middle East. Finally, from, from the industry panel, we sort of have another broad catch-all category. Um, and investor pressure um, due to factors like high interest rates, inflation, although obviously um, we're seeing inflation falling, um, and, and the election are leading to some project delays. Um, and and uh, I, I think investors are probably adopting a wait-and-see attitude in terms of uh, whether or not they're prepared to commit um, to, to, to funding projects. Um, and another issue was raised, which is um, potential insolvencies um, uh, within the supply chain having an impact on, on investor confidence. Um, and uh, so I think fairly crucial. Um, contractors um, have, 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 have been adjusting their procurement strategies in an attempt to manage cash flow. And as we all know, uh, most contractors are, are in it for the cash flow. They're not, they're not in it for the profit because there isn't a lot. <laughs> but cash, cash flow is the main reason that they're in business. Um, and as a result, they're, they're opting for, for simpler projects. And uh, as, as we saw on the earlier slide, I think uh, more two-stage or target cost contracts, um, which enables them to manage um, the risks uh, uh, a bit more um, successfully. Um, another point was slowdown on new builds, um, which was being evident. However, we're that starting to see more opportunities coming through. Um, so there is renewed optimism that, that things will improve this year, which is which is a good thing. Um, and uh, one of the members were reporting that there was more bids for for cost consultancy services, um, which sort of suggests that schemes. Um, will will be taken to through to tender stage, um, so that sort of bodes well for 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 maybe later this year and uh, at the beginning of uh, 2025. Um, one highlight was the risk of contractor insolvency, uh, which which continues to be a an issue on projects, um, and as a result, main contractors are, are pricing in the risk. Um, for, for supply chain insolvencies, which is obviously leading to slightly higher tender, tender returns. Um, and finally, from, from the panel, um, something on material supply and lead times. Um, and it was noted that there are some issues with, with overseas materials uh, due to the various foreign conflicts taking place at the moment. Um, but in general, um, it's felt that, that uh, the market um, has, has now returned to, to pre-COVID norms. So in terms of uh, material supply, thing, things are looking much more positive. So we've gone through um, the uh, demand side um, in, in terms of output and orders, had a quick look at, uh, at our, our predictions for, for inflation through, through costs and prices. Um, and if we quickly summarise those before we take any questions, so in terms of what the outlook for, for, our, for our sector looks like, I, I, I think the construction sector um, shows clear signs of, of recession as, as demand is softening um, and, and the, the effects of monetary tightening continue to build. Uh, the government's plan, uh, plans for construction really remain fairly unclear, um, and that's despite the, the recent publication of, of, of the construction pipeline and, and the latest budget, which was um, fairly benign, I think, in terms of any mention of, of construction. Um, uh, from the, the private sector, I think there's doubts um, over 
private sector and institutional investors' appetite um, for investment in, in, in UK construction. Um, and I think that's probably going to delay projects uh, from, from, from getting, getting out of the ground. Um, but I think it's, it's worth noting that uh, the, the past four years have, have been like anything that I've experienced in the industry before, and I've been involved with it for, for over three decades. Um, and it, I think it goes to show how resilient our, our, our sector sector is. Um, and despite the, the last four years being fairly challenging, I think it looks as though there, there's, there's certainly light at the end of the tunnel. So if we sort of conclude um, and return to, to our original question, which <laughs> was recession or recovery, um, what, what does the data we've just looked at tell us? Um, I think it, it, it suggests that the period of rampant inflation that we've, uh, that we've all lived through um, is, is behind us. Um, but unfortunately, it's been replaced by, by falling demand, um, largely driven by uncertainty um, and uh, falls in, in, in investment. Um, and there are a few sort of wider issues um, the conflict, certainly, uh, certainly the conflict in the Middle East um, and the attacks in the Red Sea um, are adding um, to the increasing uncertainty um, that, that we're experiencing. Um, I mean, on, on the flip side, um, there were sort of starting to be issues in terms of capacity um, a few years ago. But uh, the, the fall in demand um, has, has, has re released some resources, and I think capacity issues um, are less of an issue currently. Uh, that's not to say they they they, they won't um, uh, come back. I think as as demand picks up next year um, and through 2026, we we may end up in a, with an issue in terms of um, supply problems. Um, one of the reasons um, for me, including the new audit slide, was just to see what, what they may be saying or indicating in terms of future demand. Um, and I, I think there's, there's been a, certainly been a dramatic fall in, in, in orders um, last year. And, and this has led contractors to, to, to look to, uh, to their order books to secure future work. Um, but I think as our panel members um, highlighted, uh, contracts are, are, are remaining very careful when selecting projects to bid on. Um, and it, it, in some instances, instances there's, there's difficulty um, in, in finding contractors to bid on, on large and complex contracts. Um, finally, I think our takeaway is that we're expecting 2024 to remain challenging um, for our sector. But uh, on, on the on the positive side of things, we're, we're expecting um, a fairly muted recovery um, in 2025 um, before we get into a period of more robust growth uh, from, from 2026 onwards. All in all, uh, a slightly more uplifting um, outlook, I think. Okay, let's make a, a start on the on the on the Q and A. Um, and the first one that's come in is, do you expect the recession to be severe? Um, I, I, the fundamentals don't, don't look that great. Um, but uh, as, I, as I touched on before, I think construction appears to be a very resilient sector. Um, so given what we've gone through over the last few years, um, uh, the place that we're currently at, I, we're, we're not predicting a major slump. Um, and our, our forecasts are, are, are actually relatively upbeat uh, compared to the recent past. Um, once we sort of get through get through this year, um, but there are obviously caveats and, and, and risks to that forecast. Um, much of it will depend on the timing um, and potentially the outcome of, of the general election, um, and. As, as we mentioned, I think on the first, uh, first slide, uh, recent official data suggests that the downturn will be shallow. Um, 
but one concern certainly remains uh, for me, and that's the the the, the elevated cost of borrowing. Um, and we we really need the Bank of England to 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 address that as soon as possible. To 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 get the wider economy and also the construction economy um, growing a bit faster. Um, and another one on, on a similar theme: uh, Will the upcoming election ha- ha- have an impact? Um, uh, I mean, generally, historically, uh, the uncertainty caused by um, upcoming elections. They, they do have a slightly negative impact on, on levels of construction demand. Um, private investors tend to, to adopt a wait and see attitude to see what the result might be before they um, take projects forward. Um, and on, on, you know, in addition to that, you've got government spending plans which, which end up uh, being stalled um, as the political Canada shrinks. Um, so there's not enough time to um, to to uh, to get their spending plans fully fully realised. Uh, my my best guess in terms of, of timing for the election, um, and, and I think based on the content of uh, of the latest um, underwhelming budget, is that there's probably going to be an uh, to be an autumn statement um, sometime in November, um, which which I think will be uh, a bit more of a giveaway, um, and. If that happens, um, it probably mean that the election will actually be towards the very end of the year, or, or indeed it could, it could actually, um, be in January 2025. Um, although historically not many governments like to have, uh, elections in January. Um, so, so yeah, I, 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 I think that there will be an impact, uh, from, from the election just through, uh, the uncertainty that they introduce. Um, and one more just come in. Are insolvency something that we should be concerned about? Um, I mean, this is a question that that came up in the last webinar, and and we said that that we need to monitor it, um, um, monitor the situation, sort of keep 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 ahead of it. Um, and it, it seems that insolvencies are continuing to have an impact um, on on construction. Um, in, in the fourth quarter of 2023, it was the end of last year, the total number of insolvencies had risen um, by uh, 15% on, on the previous quarter. Um, and I think that's after two quarters, if I recall, uh, where the numbers had fallen. Um, so there was a, a sort of fairly steep rise um, towards, towards the end of, of last year. Um, and that was driven by um, two Subsectors in particular, which was uh, construction of buildings um, and specialised construction activities, um, and they both regist- registered fa- very large increases. Um, and and that coupled with um, what we previously saw our industry panel members commenting on um, that the the impact of insolvencies. Um, we're starting to, to, to limit the industry's capacity. Um, and, you know, I think it, it was being particularly noted in, in um, the M&E supply chain, which um, was reported to have a, a, a significant lack of capacity, which was starting to drive up costs. Um, so I, I do think insolvencies um, are negatively impacting capacity. Um, but it, but it is worth noting that, um, I think while insolvencies are, are currently running fairly high, um, that they're, they're not yet at the, the record levels, um, that we saw after the financial crisis in 2008. So having an impact, um, but not quite as bad as it has been historically, but it's certainly something that we should, uh, will continue to monitor go, going forward. Um, okay. Conscious that we're getting very close to, to, to running out of time. Um, so that ends today's webinar. Um, many thanks for joining. Um, I think as, as, as last time, um, a slightly more positive, um, and optimistic outlook, uh, for construction compared to, 
to what we've been through over the last few years. Um, and again, uh, at the next webinar, uh, we, we can see if that optimism was, was well-founded. Um, so hopefully see you there.